Yes, there we go. Okay, I'm excited now. <laughs> Add image strip. And now we have, oh yeah, look at that. Nice fire burn right on over our blue burning away into the purple. This video is a part of a series, and if you want to check out the whole series, head on over to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members-only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today. See this being burned away. Without our fire yet, we still have to render our fire out, but uh, this is a good start. I'm going to press Control T so we can see our frames. I'm going to stay on frame 30 uh, because I'm going to show you what happens with our fire when we render it out. So let's go back to our texture and go to frame 30 and go to our layout view here and we want to plug our fire in only now so let's just plug this one in so that's what it looks like if we go to rendered mode we have our transparency which is good so let's go to rendering and see what we have scroll in here and press f12 and ta-da it looks like this matches and it looks like we have exactly what we want but unfortunately that's not the true that's not true uh, if we come over and just save a copy of this image, and I'm going to save it uh, in a new folder called graphics. And we're just going to do fire test PNG uh, RGBA. Of course, we want the alpha. We we'll save that. Okay, so now when we come back over to our video sequence editor and go to video editing tab, so we want to stay on frame 30 because that's the frame that we rendered out. So add in an image, go up and go to our graphics and add in our fire test. And look at what we have. Uh, we have, uh, it just looks like it's all white. This looks terrible, actually. And we could come over to our modifiers and add in, you know, color balance and kind of affect that here like this. Um, we could uh, go um, and add this as an add. Uh, which doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. So yeah, this is actually not um, rendering out at all what we want. And it looks like it's all white. It's just all colorless. And depending on what your fire looks like, it could be uh, yellow or orange or whatever color that you had here and just a flat color and we don't have that bloom. And this was really super frustrating for me when I was first doing this and it took me forever to figure out. So the bloom, even though it still shows in our render result, which I, in my opinion, shouldn't be shown in our render result, because in our render result, we are rendering, let's see, our view layer. If we come over here to this button here and choose alpha, you can see our alpha is just black and white. It doesn't compensate for any fading of that bloom. We also don't have bloom enabled in our render view layer. So if we come back over here and we come over to our view layer properties, you can see we have this bloom here for effects. So I'm just going to check that. And now you would think just F12 and render that again and overlay it and it will have that bloom. Well, you would be wrong. So now we have uh, combined. So we have bloom. Looks like that's exactly what we're, we're, we're wanting over the white, which gives us this bloom effect. But again, our alpha, if we choose our alpha, it's only going to show us where our alpha is. Now, there may be a way to do this in the shader editor. I haven't gotten there yet, but I do know that the solution is compositing. So we actually have to go to the compositing nodes and click use nodes. And with our render layers, which should already be rendered, uh, if not, you can press F12 again. You can see it if you use the backdrop and then control shift and then click, and now we have our, our backdrop here. Now I don't like to use the backdrop. I'm gonna drag out another area here, and we're just gonna use uh, the image editor, and then change this to uh, viewer node. So anything that I plug into the viewer node down here is going to be displayed over here. I'm gonna uncheck the backdrop here. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to actually add our bloom 
and our alpha together. So what we're going to do is search for a mix node, and we want to drag our alpha in the top, bloom in the bottom, and then change this to add, because we're going to add those together. And let's see what that gives us. OK, so that's a, that's a start. Um, but uh, right now, it's adding color to that bloom, uh, which may, may or may not be what we want. Um, I'm going to show you the way I did it uh, based off of a couple of tutorials that I watched. So we're going to go to Converter and Color Ramp, and we're going to add this into the bottom there. And then this is going to be our factor for our bloom. And we want to actually take this white one and pull this all the way in, because we want we want that bloom like that. So we don't want to we don't do too much. We want to find kind of a happy medium. But if it's just at the default here, it won't cover enough ground for some reason. I don't know why. But if we just take this and we just pull that in a little bit and we can always adjust this later. OK, and then we want to do add in a set alpha. Plug that in here. And then use this for the alpha. And if we plug that in here, now you can see we've got our bloom effect going on. This is what we're going to see in the final render. So this is where we can then uh, change this here. You can see by pulling up that all the way down with the black, you can see we have that more of that bloom effect that's actually going to be shown. And we can dial that in there, but I don't want to do that. So uh, we can also change the color here. But we don't want we want that to be all the way up. So this is what we're going to actually see over top of our image now. So we can save this here, and we can overwrite and just re-render all of those and overwrite what we already have by coming over here to our output. And uh, we got to also make sure that this is not just in the viewer node, but it's in the compositing node. So if we go to our render result, we need to also see. Now, unfortunately, this isn't going to help us because this is going to show us, again, the fake render result <laughs> that uh, sh it shouldn't be showing us. It should actually be the more accurate uh, view is going to be this, uh, unfortunately. But we still need to make sure that this is in the composite node because that's what is actually going to be output. So we're ready. Let's make sure we're on our correct image sequence here. I actually uh, renamed these wrong. Uh, this is fire burn fire. This should be mask. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to go up and create another one called IMSQ Fire Burn Fire 2. But what I would like to do, would like to have done is Fire Burn underscore Mask 01, Fire Burn underscore Fire 01. And then that we, we would have the 01 for the mask and the fire, but whatever, we'll just do Fire 1 and Fire 2 now and change this to Fire 2. OK, and let's click Overwrite and Control F12 to render all of that out again. And let's go to our rendering to see what we have. Again, this is our render. Oh, and this is our render result. Oh, no, because we have OK, no color and alpha here. There we go. And again, it's not going to look exactly like this, which this is, I think, kind of a fault in Blender. Uh, the re render result should give you the re render result, what you're actually outputting. So that's a little bit frustrating. All right, it's done. So let's go back over to our video sequence editor scene here. And uh, we are going to delete that and then refresh our sequencer here. Uh, actually, we don't need to do that because we only have the mask. <laughs> so we just need to add in our image sequence of our Fire 2. And that should be right on over that. Oh, and look, it doesn't give us the effect that we're going for. Still either. It's still outputting this. Nonsense. <sighs> and why is that? And the reason for that is because uh, we did not click compositing in our post-processing. So it was just rendering the same exact thing out. So we need to actually click compositing and it will take now everything we have in our 3D view, feed it through the compositor, which is our node set up here, and then output this. So F12, okay, that's what we should see. 
save it, and once again, Control F12, and we're going to render that out again. See how it changes? See, this is what I'm talking about. So it starts with the uh, render result that Blender shows you, and then it gives you the real result. <laughs> it's so dumb. But we can adjust this in the VSC anyway when we're when it's done. Okay, so now we should be able to come back to the VSC video editing, and now we can refresh. Hopefully, our fire burn. What? Okay, I think I think I found the final straw, the final solution here. Um, this apply mask for set alpha. We need to do replace alpha, and now you can see. Then this does in the viewer node look like the render result. Um, if we press F12 again, then you can see. There we go. Okay, so now this is what it really should look like. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. So we're gonna save this and we're going to uh, overwrite these and render this out again. Okay, so moment of truth here. Let's go back to our editing, and we're gonna open up image sequence. Fireburn 2, yes, there we go. Okay, I'm excited now. <laughs> Add image strip. And now we have, oh yeah, look at that. Nice fire burn right on over our blue, burning away into the purple. Or burning onto. You can go back and forth, whatever. And the cool thing with this is you can actually even come here uh, we do transform and we can actually, well, just select this and just rotate. We can rotate this here, of course, and we can scale it. Of course, we're gonna, we we would want to uh, take the masks and um, rotate and scale that the same way. So that would have to be rotated uh, as well in the same way. Um, but it's it's doable. It's doable, definitely. Let's do Alt R there on this one. Okay, but we can also uh, adjust this. So if we go to modifiers, let's add in a color balance on our fire burn, and uh, we can pull this up or down, make this a little bit more, a um, little softer, a uh, little bit more light as well. Uh, bring up some of those. Um, the inner, so this this is down here. The gain is like the inside. The gamma is like the outside. So we can adjust those like that. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Okay, there you go. I hope this tutorial isn't too long. We went over a lot of stuff, but I hope that gives you a lot of ideas of what you could use this for. And again, if you want a whole bunch more stuff like this, extra Blender tutorials, project files, live streams, and a whole bunch more, head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member there. But until then, you'll see me in the next one.